Hello, this is Mark from My Keys to Music. Thanks for joining me on this video. Today, I have a rarity around here. I have an acoustic instrument, which is rare only because we've been doing Nord keyboards and synthesizers and electronic music and software since the channel started. We've got over 70 videos now of, you know, synthesizer type related music. But this is a steel drum. This is acoustic instruments. What's it doing here? It doesn't belong. Actually, it does, and what it doesn't know is that it's going to be turned into an electronic music uh, uh, instrument in the end because we're sampling it, putting it in the Nord keyboard. So it, it doesn't know that. It could probably hear me, but uh, it's okay. It, it'll be all right. So let me play a little bit of this acoustic instrument so you can hear what it was like or what it is like in real life here prior to the sample. Now, before I get too much further, I have to thank the people at Kanga Music. It's a nonprofit organization here located north of San Diego, and they create music, unite people, and build communities around the steel drum or the steel pan. And they will go into elementary schools and teach the steel drum to, to kids uh, in a group setting. They also do private lessons. They also do lessons for um, all ages, actually. And you can go and weekly take lessons and, and show up with a group. It's very relaxed, but it's very fun. If you want to check them out, there's a link down below in this video. Um, you can go check them out. They have quite a few videos on YouTube as well with some of the footage from the concerts that they do, and it, it's good stuff. Um, with that said, if you want to see some of the world's greatest steel drum playing, I'll also put a link down below uh, and you can go check out the people that hang out in Trinidad and there's essentially steel drum orchestras and they put on uh, contests and concerts and the kind of virtuosity and musicianship that come out of these human beings with this drum is just unbelievable. I could sit there for hours and listen to these guys. It's just amazing. So if you've never heard that before or really want to see what that's like, definitely check that out. Okay. So for those of you who just want to grab the sample and go, I've put the samples below this video. I've made samples available for the Nord Electro 6 as well as the Nord Stage 3. They're formatted in the form of a bundle, and a bundle includes both the program, that's the name of the, the patch, if you will, along with the associated sample of the steel drum. So it's the program and the steel drum sample combined in a bundle, and you can load that on your Nord keyboard. Now, for those of you who want to see what this is all about and how I created this sample, I'll take you on a journey where we'll go from A to Z on how this was created. So this video will get a little long, but um, if you've ever wanted to do this and see what it's like and how to, to possibly do your own samples, this video is for you. You'll be able to learn that. So let's get started on the training part, and thanks for watching. All right, what is required in order to create a sample for your Nord keyboard? Now, this video and this lesson that you're about to watch assumes that you've never done this before. So what do we need in this case? We need a microphone. Does it have to be a good mic? Uh, well, obviously, the better the mic, the better the sample. You know what they say in the computer world, garbage in, garbage out. Well, it's the same in the audio world. If you start with a crappy mic and uh, the volumes aren't correct and the, the gains aren't just perfect or it's distorted, if any of those things um, are at play, then your sample is going to suffer as a result. So you obviously want to do the best you can to get the best sample that you can. In my case, I'm using uh, what essentially boils down to an instrument mic. It's a Hale or a Heil microphone. Uh, they've been around forever, and I'll put a description in the uh, link below. You can take a look at that. In fact, I use this microphone for all the audio that you hear on this channel, or most of the audio. The spoken word that you're hearing right now is coming from this microphone. So it's a really good mic. I, I really like the way it presents, and it just so happens it works really well for the steel drum, in my opinion. So I've put that microphone under the steel drum as shown here in the picture, and I've placed it sort of in the center of the drum, and, you know, not too close, but not too far. And you can experiment with the distance and all of that, really that boils down to your taste. You may already be an audio engineer, and miking instruments come second nature to you. You already know how to do that, and you already know exactly what you're doing. In this case, it's a steel drum, which is already a rare instrument in, in most of people's opinions. So I have really no idea on the best way to mic it, but it was told to me by the person who's lending it to me that uh, you can either go above the steel drum or below it. I decided to go below in order to do this particular sample. Now, what I did is I tried to play uh, notes. I played the entire C scale 
starting from the low C, and this is a tenor steel pan, so um, it's more used for the melody and or solo parts, uh, but there's all kinds of steel drums out there in different sizes and flavors and um, different characteristics to make you know what essentially becomes a steel drum orchestra. Next, you need a way to record these sounds into your computer. What I have here is something called Audacity, and this is a program that runs on my Macintosh. It also runs on Windows, and you can download it. It's open source, so you want to download that and install that on your computer. I won't show you how to download and install that. I assume that you, you can probably figure that on your own, hopefully. Once you have the program loaded, you're, you just need a couple of settings here. You just want to make sure that the microphone is assigned to the microphone that you are actually using. In my case, there's four inputs here, but I actually used the Scarlett, which is an audio interface. It accommodates this microphone here, and then it converts that audio signal into something the computer can understand, and now it will show up here in Audacity. And then the output I have in this case is the Telestream Audio Capture. That's just so that I can... Um, pump out that audio so that you can hear it here on this video. So you'll want to use your own headphones or if you're using speakers, uh, use speakers. So what the audio output is going to be whatever you need it to be. That's it. So I've just set the audio input essentially, and then I click record and let it rip. So the way that I've done this here, and I'll just play it for you, starting at the beginning, is uh, one note at a time, and I let the note ring. That's this first C, C4. There's the D. And here comes the E. And you'll notice a couple things at play here. First of all, I, I've let it ring a little bit. And I purposely let the acoustics do their thing for um, as this first note is played. You'll hear the other notes. If you listen carefully in the background, you'll hear the overtones and, and the other notes picking up on that resonance of the first because it is one connected drum. And I figured, well, that would be the most natural state uh, of the sample. But it was suggested, perhaps, that you could muffle the other tones while playing the first tone uh, as an option for you if you really just wanted to isolate that one note and only hear that one note. But I figured it'd be pretty authentic if we just let it play as if it would be heard in the wild. So I went through all of that. It's about a minute recording, and I essentially played two C scales, C to C to C. And uh, that will represent, I believe, C4 through C6, what will end up being on the actual Nord keyboard. Once this is recorded and you're happy with that, you'll export it to a WAV file. Now, you'll also notice that some of the notes aren't as loud as the others. You don't really have to worry too much about that because you can adjust those audio uh, volumes in the Nord sample editor software. Uh, it's almost as if they knew this was a possibility when you're doing acoustic instruments, you're never gonna get it perfect in terms of volume. You do wanna make sure that your audio is loud enough where you're picking up a good signal, but not too loud where it's distorted. That distortion will definitely come through all the way to the Nord keyboard and you'll end up with a pretty poor sample if you, uh, if you don't get this right going in. Okay, so I think that takes care of Audacity. So once you have that recorded and you're happy with it, you can export it as a WAV file. And I just called mine steelpan.wav. So now that we've prepared our WAV file for use in the Nord sample editor, it's time to actually go get the sample editor. To do that, you'll go to nordkeyboards.com. And the sample editor can be found under the software area of the website. And you'll see it right here on this main page, Nord sample editor. Download that or take a look at that. And you'll see you can read a little bit about it. Uh, it talks about some of the features, the benefits. Read through this list. It's a quick and easy read. And then when you're ready, download the Nord Sample Editor version 2.28 as of this recording. You'll see that it's compatible with two platforms, Macintosh or Windows. If you're running it on Windows, you'll want to be sure to uh, install the Clavia USB driver. In addition to that, in fact, install the driver, get that ready first, then install the Nord Sample Editor. If you've already installed the Nord Sound Manager, which is another application available from Nord, and the Sound Manager allows you to move files back and forth and organize your keyboard, if you've already done that, then you don't need to reinstall the Clavio USB driver. That's not necessary twice. As long as you do it at least one time, you'll be fine. Since this is a Macintosh, I'm going to download the sample editor for my Mac. 
Also note that there's a manual here. If you get stuck in this video, uh, doesn't give you all the answers. You can just open up the sample editor manual and take a look at it from there. All right, so I'm gonna close the website now. Let's go ahead and install this piece of software. It's located right here in my downloads folder. And I'll just double click it. This is nothing unusual here. This is standard Macintosh installation protocol. And I will simply drag this application over to my applications folder. On Windows, you'll see more of a traditional installation wizard screen. It'll walk you through the process. And okay, now that we have the Nord sample editor open, you'll see there's different components to this. Each one has a different purpose for the main goal of getting you to edit your sample, get it configured properly so that you can use it on your Nord keyboard in an effective way. Now there's a lot of different options here. I first wanna say that you could either choose to record your sample as a single wave file and have the multiple notes contained within the single file, or you can have multiple wave files. You could have one wave file for each note, or a special effect, or you can even record a part of a song and have that as a separate WAV file. And then you can take all of those WAV files combined and map them to a single program on your Nord Stage 3 and map them to individual keys one by one, essentially giving you really an unlimited option for you when it comes to samples. Now, most of the time you would traditionally have one particular instrument sampled on one keyboard program at a time, but technically you could have sound effects on one part of the keyboard. You could have a, a complete sound or a complete song on another part of the keyboard and an instrument somewhere in the middle. So you literally have a choice there. And that's why they give you the option to add multiple wave files here. In this particular example though, my steelpan.wave, I only have one particular wave file and it happens to have two octaves worth of recorded tones or notes. So that's why you see that here, but I could just as easily click add and continue to add more and more wave files and then eventually take that whole group as a collective, export it as a single sample that I can use on my Nord keyboard. So a lot of flexibility here. And that's why really technically speaking, this particular video is here just to get you started with this one um, steel drum sample as an example to get started. But Really, this whole video should be more like two or three hours long to really understand every nook and cranny of the actual Nord sample editor. With that said, let's continue. So I've added my WAV file here, and now it literally is time to map them to the keys. That really is the next step. So if you, if you look closely here, you'll see that this is one giant sample. It doesn't see the distinguish, distinguishing uh, components of each note. So in order to do that, I have a couple options. I can use the automated option here, which is called the multi-sample per file assign. And this assumes though, that your samples are calibrated in such a way that they're either by one semitone or two semitones or three semitones between the intervals. Well, the truth is I use the C scale and technically speaking, C scale, C major scale is not consistently portrayed as one semitone or two, it varies based on the part of the scale that you're in. So if I did a chromatic scale, I would have a one semitone um, outline. And let's just say I did this chromatically, where I did a C, a C sharp, a D, a D sharp, and so forth. If I did that, then I could just say, okay, starting from key C4, go up one semitone per tone and automatically assign them. And if it was correct, you would see here, as, as it's done beautifully, it, it assigns it chromatically. But the truth is, this is a C, this is a D in real life, and where it's not a C sharp. So that isn't going to work. Okay, so I'll click D assign all, and we'll start over. Uh, but I'm kind of glad that I did a C major scale because then it gives us a chance to learn how to do it manually. So to do it manually, you simply highlight the waveform manually, and then choose what note that waveform goes to. It couldn't be easier. Just this is a C4. All right, and don't worry about this. You can manually adjust this if you wanted, but I've done it here with the mouse, I've dragged it. So click assign. Now this tone has been assigned to the key C4 here on my keyboard. And you'll notice that it colors in gray, dark gray, up and down. That's, it's going to stretch that note and make it so that it appears on all of those keys. It's gonna map it to all those keys with the original key being the C4. As I get further and further from the original sample, my, th my sound gets less and less authentic because it's being stretched and manipulated to ride over those tones, but in reality, um, you know, it's further and further away from the C4. Thus, that's why you want an additional sample. So 
Let's now pick this one. Let me make sure I'm getting this all the way like that. And I want that to be assigned to D4 and then click assign. And now you'll see I've got two keys assigned and look what happens. Uh, the C4 is now assigned to everything to the left and C sharp, whereas the D now is this tone and that's assigned everything to the right all the way up to C, looks like C6 and a little bit more. So as I continue to do these, you'll see the mapping change. So I'll map this tone, which we know is an E4. Click Assign. And we'll do a few more here. Assign this one. F4, Assign. G4, Assign. And now you can see my samples are building out. So I'll finish this and come back. Okay, I finished assigning all these, and you can see here that my keyboard is mapped using the C major scale from C4 all the way to C6. If I click on one of these, it highlights it here on the map, as well as shows you on the keyboard that this one represents, in this case, F4 and F sharp 4. This one is going to be G and G sharp. This one's going to be A and B flat or A sharp. And at any time you can play these, and you can hear any one of them to make sure that you've assigned them correctly. So that's really step one, is to map these tones ac across the keyboard. And all of these other um, elements here that you see below is really just to make your assignment of those easier or, or to tweak uh, the, the assignment to edit it at any time. Then this scale over here, which you'll see um, represented throughout the program, can choose whether you want the um, waveforms to be taller or shorter and or more, more magnified and then you can scrub through this way to find and hone in on exactly what you're looking to do. All right, so now that we've done the mapping, let's go look at the sample, loop, and stop option. Now here you see a, a really important thing to select, which is to determine if it's going to be a long loop, a short loop, or no loop. And in the case of a no loop, is uh, when you're talking about instruments that have a natural decay, such as a piano key or a steel drum or a marimba, anything that would have a natural decay where if you clicked and hold it, it the sound would eventually dissipate. Uh, that's a no-loop situation, and that's what we have here with the steel drum. So let's go ahead and make sure that each key is set to no-loop. So I have to go through, starting with C4, click on C4, click no-loop, click on D, no-loop, and so forth. Each one of these has no loop. So I'll finish that now and come back. Okay, so I've assigned each one of these tones to have no loop. And you can see that if it did have a loop, like in the case of a pad sound or something that you did actually want to loop so that it could go on essentially for as long as you hold the note on the Nord keyboard, then you would want to play with the long loop or the short loop. And then you'd want to adjust these settings here if need be for the long loop settings, the short loop settings. We do have adjustments here for the no loop settings. We can determine the exact stop and fade out point for that, and you'll see that with each tone, like if I pick a tone here in the middle, the stop point is at 1.0448. If I pick a tone down here, uh, each one varies based on its stop point and so forth. So I tend not to need to fix this, the no loop part here, because uh, as long as I start it and select it correctly, we're good to go, which takes us to the next subject, which is the sample start area. So for this, I wanna zoom out a little bit Let's go all the way to, well, let's start with C4 and, and maybe actually go to like a five or something like that. So this is where you're going to click, one click, just to the left of the sample for the perfect start timing. So um, I've got the C4 selected here, then I'll click once here, and it should show you this little gray arrow here, shows you the beginning and then the end. So you want this as close as possible. It doesn't have to be right on the money, I do want to really make sure I capture the mallet sound of the initial hit of the steel drum. So you don't want to cut off the beginning part, but there may be a situation where you do want to cut off the beginning part based on the type of sample. So I'll go through a few of these here and set this start to something a lot closer to exactly what we're looking for. And that's where zooming in like this really helps. You can even zoom in more like this, but then make it a little smaller like that. That way you'll get even a more accurate uh, selection here, just like this. As I go through, you can see here, I am getting the perfect start point for each of these tones. 
and we're you know we're down to the millisecond here as far as the fidelity that we're looking at when we're making these adjustments. But with the time you spend to do this is going to pay off in the end for a better sample, better overall presentation. And you can always begin um, editing these samples, and then you can um, go away and say, save it and come back and continue to edit and tweak as need be. You can um, save your project and add more samples to it. Okay, so I've done the start time, the sample start. The sample alternate start uh, is something we're not going to use and goes beyond the scope of this video, but you can read about what that is. It's another ad ad additional advanced option that you can apply but we won't need that for here. Now the instrument, this is an interesting option here for you. It shows you, and it's trying to um, give you a picture of the overall volumes of these sounds. So as you remember, if you paid attention to the first uh, earlier part in the video where you saw that I recorded them at different sound levels, uh, that's what's represented here. And you can see here this particular sample, uh, what is it, C, D, E, the E key, uh, in the second octave is very low. In fact, the final, uh, the B key here right at the end is very low. So what you can do is you can simply normalize all, which I tend to do, and watch what happens to this when I click normalize all. They'll all flatten out and they'll all do their best to adjust to the correct volume. Okay, looking down below here at some additional options you have, you can adjust the keyboard gain relative to the range. Starting with this note here, you can determine, okay, well, I want to reduce, and watch this line here, I want to reduce the amount of gain in the lower octaves, like this, but you may want to enhance the gain in the upper octaves. It really depends on the sample, the instrument, and your personal taste, but you can adjust the overall gain uh, relative to the range of the keyboard using that option there. Then you can do what's called a global detune. Let's say you were recording a very old instrument that you knew was slightly flat. You could say, okay, overall, I want to bring up the all the samples by a certain percent or a certain cent and adjust it that way. Or you can do it sample by sample. So this one you might want to do up two or three. This one you might want to do down and then come back to this one. Or you can reset them all. So there's some fine tuning, it's literally fine tuning. Then you can make additional fine tunings here using this sample zone area. For example, let's just say I click on the C6 key and I want the upper key, the highest I want it to be is C7. I can actually reduce the range of this upper key, giving me some flexibility there so that if I were to go plus two on the with the octave switch on the Nord keyboard, I play a key, I may not hear it because I won't want to hear it because it's not uh, a good representation of a steel drum at that point. So rather hear nothing than, you know, high tinny tin type sounds. All right, but there's some adjustments there. And other things here which you can read about in the manual as far as some other fine tuning. The sample preset is the last area we'll talk about here. Uh, you get to choose some, I, I like to call it default settings or default posture when it comes to selecting that sound and when you select the sample in the Nord keyboard, this is sort of the prerequisites of what, what it's going to do. The decay time, I'm going to choose uh, long for decay because when I do press and hold, I do want to hear it ring out. If I had no decay time, I would push it and uh, no decay would be heard, but I could on the stage three, for example, I could choose to enhance the decay and then I'll hear it. So in a sense, this is really just the default posture of this sound when it's first selected on your Nord keyboard. So I'll say long for the decay time. The release time, I'll choose, uh, let's say a medium one. You can maybe a medium two for the release time so that when I let go, it'll ring out a little bit. Um, again, I can adjust, I can override all of that right on the keyboard itself. But this is just, if I go right to the keyboard, select a new program, use this sample, I want to hear sort of this as the um, as the predefined settings. And then I'll keep this right here, um, right between the negative two and the positive two, so that when I um, select the sample, it's not automatically plus two in the octave range. It's just sitting right there. All right. Now, um, most of these screens have this generate and download. You can do this from any screen, but I'll just, uh, I'll stay on this last screen here. Download is only when you want it to also uh, go right to the keyboard itself. However, this is not an option for you 
if you are using a modern day keyboard, I'll show you what I mean here. There's um, an issue that they're working on with the Nord sample editor. And that issue is uh, defined here in this area right here. When you look at where you download, it says right here, attention Nord stage three, electro six, piano four and grand owners. User created samples cannot be directly downloaded from this application to your instrument. Instead, use the Nord Sound Manager to transfer the generated Nord sample file. We're working on an updated version of the Nord sample editor. So in other words, if you click download, it won't matter. It won't go to your keyboard. That's where you have to use the Sound Manager to do that. So I just, I don't, it doesn't matter whether it's clicked or not. But generate will actually generate the sample and it will put it on your hard drive right next to wherever you stored this um, this actual sample editor. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and save this project now. I'll say save project and we'll call it uh, Nord Steel Drum. I'll put it on my desktop and you'll see it here. And when I click generate now, you'll see right next to it, there's the actual Nord sample file. And now let's go load this on our Nord keyboard. Okay, so after you save your Nord sample editor file, your project file, you'll notice that it's going to be named with this particular extension. And this of course is the sample that we created from it that we generated from it. But here's something to really be um, paying attention to. And that is the wave file that I originally used for this is needs to be continuously associated with the project file. In other words, you don't want to delete your wave file ever because the project file will look to that if you're going to do future edits of that project. So let's just give you an example. Let's, uh, the original location of this particular WAV file was on my RAM disk. If I move that over here next to the project file and delete it from the RAM disk, what's gonna happen the next time I open that project up? Watch. It's not going to be able to find the WAV file. So it's asking me, where is it? See, it's completely blank. It doesn't know where it is. So that's a necessary ingredient. So I'll redirect it to where I've put it now on the desktop. Here it is, steelpan.wave. And it all will come back to normal just as I left it. So bottom line here is put your project file and your WAV files all in a folder to keep them nice and neat. That way when you go look at them later on or you want to edit them in the future, everything is all in one folder and uh, nothing will get ruined. All right, now it's time to work with the actual sample and move it over to the keyboard. So as you read in the instructions, uh, at this time, the sample editor doesn't have accommodations to actually move it all in one motion. So we need to open up the Nord Sound Manager, which is another application. And if you need information on that, I already have videos on how to work with the Sound Manager. And uh, in this case, I happen to be connected to my Nord Electro 6, which is fine. And I'll go right here to Sample Library. And if I put in the word steel in my filter, you'll see that I have an existing steel guitar and a, an existing steel guitar finger. Fine. I want to move this Nord steel drum over to this. So I can just drag it over like that. Or I can choose it from the buttons. But it says here, Sample Conversion Required. Uh, Nord Electro 6 does not support samples in this particular format. Do you want to convert it? Yes. So at least it converts it for us and gives us a chance. There it is. It's coming in. There's the Nord Steel drum. Now this sample I can use and I can assign it to various programs within the Nord keyboard. So with any sample that you use, uh, whether it be your own or this one, you can always adjust the decay and release settings and the attack settings, and you can introduce dynamics. So all of those are options and I highly recommend you uh, experiment with those along with the octaves up and down. All of that is supported within any sample, whether you create them on your own or they come directly from the Nord Keyboard's website. All right, let's do a recap as to what was learned here today. First, we took a microphone and a steel drum. We recorded a C major scale into the computer using a program called Audacity. Now, I didn't have to use Audacity. I chose to use Audacity because that one runs on both Mac and Windows and it's free. There are many other programs that can record sound into the computer. At the end of the day, it has to be in a WAV file format in order for the Nord sample editor to be able to deal with that. Once you import the WAV file into the sample editor, you can assign the samples to a given key on the Nord keyboard. Uh, you can tweak those, you can change the levels, you can change their start and end notes and all kinds of things with that regarding editing samples. From there, you wanna export that. And if you're using a Nord Electro 6 or Nord Stage 3 keyboard or any of the new keyboards from Nord, 
you'll have to invoke the Sound Manager, the Nord Sound Manager application, to get those onto your Nord keyboard. Once you move the sample over, you can choose to assign that to an existing program or use it on multiple programs. So the samples are really up to you on how you use that. And I didn't go over that much in this video, but there are other Sound Manager uh, videos that I have that you can look at. I think if you also watch the original lesson that I have, which is the um, understanding the synth, for the Nord Stage 3. If you watch that, you'll learn how to load a sample very easily. Then once we have it in the Nord keyboard, we can adjust the filtering, whether it be the attack, the decay, the sustain, or even the release uh, on whatever Nord keyboard you have to do some final tweaks. So that should get you started with doing your own samples. I thank you for watching. If you like this content, feel free to subscribe. We've got a lot more coming down the way. Uh, we'll be expanding into other genres, but we'll still continue things like the Discovery Series for the Nord Stage 3, as well as additional training for this and that. I'm also busy at work with the Nord Electro 6 course. Uh, we're moving along with that, and it should be out uh, within a month or two for sure. All right, thanks for watching, and we'll catch you on the next one.